A lot of people have been asking me about the app I used to design my bedroom in 3D. It's called Interior Design for iPad. It's really old, and I'm not even sure if it's still on the App Store. I used it as a quick and easy way to model out the arrangement of my bedroom. But this app is so limited compared to other methods of recreating your space, so you can get a complete design of what you want your space to look like. There are beginner methods like this more current app, as well as intermediate and advanced 3D visualization methods in Blender. I'll be using all of these methods to design my dream room in 3D. In my past three videos, I've showed my basement setup briefly. I've built a bunch of different setups down here, pretty much changing things once every couple of months, like clockwork. This basement room holds a lot of great memories and has allowed me to experiment and learn about setup creation, interior design, and video production. But recently, I moved my main setup to my bedroom to get more natural light when I'm working, so it's been a bit neglected down here. There's a lot of space down here to work with, so I want to transform this room into my dream room that I can use for gaming and productivity and use it as a YouTube studio. Instead of jumping straight into changing things and buying products like I've done in the past, I'm going to plan this transformation out to the T, so I'll truly be happy with the final result. For the beginner 3D visualization method, I'll be using the free version of this app called Key Plan 3D. Before starting in the app, I'll need to measure out the dimensions of the room as well as any furniture I want to keep in the room. To easily record the dimensions separate from the app, I quickly sketched the room in Procreate from a few different angles and added dimensions as I measured. I always get annoyed with the tape measure when doing this since it never stays stiff and usually I need someone else's assistance, if you know what I mean. I would suggest getting measurements of your space before you populate it with furniture and things everywhere because I had to get in extremely uncomfortable positions and weave the tape measure under cables and behind things, so I hope these measurements are accurate. The most important measurements were for the walls, but I also got measurements for less important things like the door, door frame, and height of the doorknob. While this process looks boring and tedious, it was really satisfying filling out my drawings in Procreate. So satisfying that I decided to draw the wall skirting and get those measurements as well. Once I have all the measurements, I can input it into the app. The app controls are super easy to figure out. You just start by drawing the walls in the 2D mode and it automatically makes them straight. Then you just click the 3D button and it transitions to a 3D view. And once the room's walls are set up, I can color match the walls and floor by scrolling through all the available colors in the color tab and dragging them onto the walls. Super easy process. And then I'll add a door by searching through the available furniture in the app and then repeat the color matching process I did for the walls and tweak the dimensions a bit to fit my measurements. Now I have an empty 3D space and I can start placing the furniture I won't be changing. I'll be keeping the same arrangement on the left side of the room with the sectional recliners, but I can only find this armchair in the app, so I just added four of them. Doesn't look the best, but it'll do for now. While the left side of the room will be strictly for relaxation and gaming, I want the right side of the room to be the ultimate studio and office space. I want floating desks to stretch all the way from the wall next to the door, all the way to the corner of the room, and all the way to the recessed wall. This app only has generic desks, so I just picked one, duplicated it a bunch of times, and stretched the dimensions. And finally, I added a TV and modified the dimensions to make it a bit bigger. This kind of 3D visualization is the most I can do using this app and other apps like it. If you upgrade to the paid version of this app, you get access to more assets, but we still can't add anything too complex or unique because we can't create any custom assets. On top of that, it doesn't look very realistic. This method is perfect for getting a general sense of what I want to create, but it isn't enough. Next, I'll be moving on to the more professional method to plan things out in more detail, using Blender. Don't be intimidated by it like I was when I started. There are a lot of things to learn here, but you don't need to know everything to design your room in 3D. There are a ton of great videos out there, which will be linked in the description below. I started this process by deleting the cube, creating a new plane, and then entering edit mode. First, I scaled the plane and extruded the top face up to make it 3D. Then I extruded the side faces out, adding one foot to account for the walls. In that extra one foot, I extruded up to create the surrounding walls. I made sure to separate the walls so I can hide and unhide half the walls to take a peek inside. Next, I went on the hunt for some free assets online to see what I could find, starting general and then getting more specific. Wasn't finding anything I liked on this website, so I tried a different one and came across a Blender add-on called Blender Kit. Add-ons can be accessed directly in Blender instead of downloading and importing separately. I installed the add-on, searched for some assets, and found this carpet asset. So I added it to the model and then began modifying it to fill up the floor of the room. I scaled it in the X and Y directions to get it to fit, and then I deleted a portion in the back corner. 
Next, I moved to the shading tab and started adding materials to the walls and carpet. Materials are very customizable, but I just used a simple principle BSDF node with a single base color. Then I started trying to create the wall skirting, and I say trying because I absolutely failed at this. My goal was to apply loop cuts to the walls so I could extrude a small strip at the bottom, but no matter what I did, the loop cuts didn't come out right, so it got me looking for another solution. And I found this add-on called CAD Sketcher that allows me to sketch on a plane and extrude it from there. So I downloaded it, watched a quick tutorial, and redid everything I've done up until this point. Since I had previous experience with CAD, this method felt a lot more natural to me, and I was able to create the floor and two separate walls much faster this time. And once everything was back to what I had before, I added a couch and moved it into place to see what it would look like. As you can see, I already designed the wall skirting, but I forgot to record it. I created one segment as its own object, not directly connected to the wall, then duplicated it, rotated, and stretched it into place for the other ones. Next, I went on the hunt for more free assets to fill out the room, but wasn't finding a lot, so I considered upgrading to the paid version of Blender Kit. I didn't do it, and instead I just downloaded assets and then only kept parts of the assets I liked, or modified the assets to get what I want. Like this whole wall I found, which has a few things I want to keep, the TV, the soundbar, the vertical wood panels, the plant, and the floating countertop. So I modified that stuff and deleted the rest. Then I found a really realistic PS5, so I added that, and then I added some controllers too. To finish off the area, I added these two plants and moved them into place to keep it symmetric. Wasn't feeling the bigger plant though, so I hit it for now. Then I came across a more realistic carpet, since the carpet in my basement isn't one perfect color. I repeated the same process as before, and I think it came out looking great. Now it was time to create the floating desk, so I hopped in CAD Sketcher, drew it out, and then extruded it. I moved it into place and stretched the faces on the corners to have it stretch the entire length of the wall. And then I found an ultra-wide monitor and a cool wall-mounted PC, and then finally I set the material for the floating desk. Alright, so now we have a more realistic version of my basement, similar to what we had in the app. Yo! Bro, what do you want? Come hang, bro. I'm, I'm kind of busy, man. But nature is calling you, man. Alright, fine. Oh, no way, you're here, bro. Oh, but you brought more technology? Oh, that's actually pretty sick, man. <laughs> What a loser. It's all good, I fixed that thing. It was at this moment that he knew. He f I couldn't find any good doors that matched mine, so I had to create one from scratch. This was honestly the hardest part of the process because I wanted it to be just as realistic as everything else. I tried my best to figure it out on my own and tried a bunch of different methods, but I couldn't get it right, so I watched a tutorial and restarted. I had to correctly apply loop cuts and then modify the vertices to match the square and rectangle designs on the door. Then I selected the faces for each shape, moved the faces in, scaled the face down proportionally, and then moved the faces back out. Then I duplicated the finished door and moved both into place. After that, I searched for a similar door handle, found a great match, and added it. Then I had to create a door frame, similar to how I created the wall skirting, and I also took some door hinges from a different model and applied the same material as the door handle. It wasn't perfect, but I think it looked pretty good. It was feeling pretty empty in the room, so I went on the hunt for more assets. I added a chair, and then found some mechanical keyboards that were pretty cool looking, as well as this standing desk. Instead of just staying on Blender Kit, I also started using the website Sketchfab to find assets, but had to download and import specific file types to get them in. I found a super realistic MacBook Pro that looks exactly like the M1 Max I have. I added some random motherboards, a 3080 box, a drone, and a camera to the standing desk. Then I found an entire setup that looked super realistic with the PC, monitor, and peripherals, as well as this cool mouse pad kit that has six pre-made designs as well as lets you customize the designs too. We'll definitely use this again in the future. At this point, I was just researching for hours and hours, finding nice looking plants, more realistic PCs and PC parts, and just sprinkled things across the room. I wasn't digging the couch or the chairs anymore, so I found this nice mesh chair and gaming chair, as well as this awesome gray couch to replace the white one that fit perfectly. To put a cherry on top, I spent some time specifically searching for things to go on the walls, as well as modifying what was already there. I duplicated the wood panel designs and put it behind the main setup. Found these awesome hexagon shelves, this cool asymmetrical painting for behind the couch, a modern looking ceiling light, more modern looking shelves, and last but not least, this backlit wood design that I'm honestly thinking about creating in real life because it's so cool. 
I finish things up on stream, so go follow me at MJJ Tech if you want to help me make design decisions in the future. The last thing I did was hop into rendered texture mode, fix the lighting in the scenario, went a little crazy and added some backlighting to the other wood panel designs, and then set up a bunch of cameras around the model and rendered a ton of images. Here's how they came out. This basement room transformation is still very much in progress, but the purpose of this video was to show what's possible with different 3D visualization methods. I've set up a detailed process for myself to go from idea to execution in Blender, and can only improve from here. Follow my socials to stay up to date with the basement transformation, and I hope I've given you some inspiration for your own room transformations. See ya!